Good morning everyone! So today you and I are going to talk about MongoDB and my experiences working with this database as a software developer. So let's get into it. Let's define it first and foremost. So just some basics about MongoDB. MongoDB is a relational, uh, no sorry, it's not a relational database, it's the absolute opposite to a relational database. It is a NoSQL database or more specifically a document database and that means that it is designed to virtually work with JSON structures. So that that's probably, it's the biggest strength and the biggest weakness all in one go. And I'll explain why. So I, a while back, I actually found this very nice online, like MongoDB, the very nice people at that company, have a few courses for where, you know, where online, where you can take a DBA certification for them uh, with, with, you know, basically for their database. And the free one is the beginner one, which is, you know, it makes a lot of sense. I and I actually, I and I actually completed that one just because I thought it was a very nice database. And I think, I still think it is a very nice database. Now, the best part about MongoDB is that it's, to begin with, very easy to get started with when it's in terms, uh, at the code level. It will take you a little bit of, like, if, if you're coming from a relational database background or something like that, it, the syntax and the querying is a little bit different, I will admit. Like, it takes you a little while to just figure it out. They have absolutely amazing documentation for the most part. Like, MongoDB probably has among the best among like it's the nicest database documentation I've seen I think it's really really great it's very easy to find what you're looking for and so forth and it, it and even like the the actual CLI like the terminal level CLI is kind of like as it's think of it as at the, at, at, uh, of the of it like this yeah it's there is a little bit of a learning curve. It will, and I can't even believe, believe I'm saying this, but this is actually where JavaScript is actually very, if you know JavaScript, this is actually very useful because if you are working in the terminal with MongoDB, you should know that the querying language they use is based on JavaScript. And basically you can write JavaScript more or less in the, like in the terminal like to do and actually a lot of the finding and searching like the sign the searching and all that stuff is done with javascript interfaces i actually i'm gonna going to tell you that when i was doing the dba course there was one thing like this was this remember this is designed for people who are looking to become a database administrator and one of the challenges that i faced was to basically use a query that in a data set that the the, the course providers had made for us and i couldn't really get it to work like i couldn't really figure it out but i do know javascript which means that i could actually like instead of and I know this is cheating. I know. I'm sorry. I it was just it was just once. I swear. So what I did was that I couldn't get the query to be perfect. So all I I did a, a wor like a worse query, and then I used JavaScript to basically create a function inside of the terminal that executed and found me the answer without using the actual query, and it worked. So yay for JavaScript and MongoDB. But let's get back to it. So. The best part about MongoDB is, 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 as I said, it's that it handles only JSON, which means that you don't have to think about what you're pushing into the database. You can push anything into MongoDB. I w that's why I think it's so popular with like Node and so forth. It because you know you're all if you're already working in JavaScript and you're already using JSON as your primary format for sending and getting data then MongoDB makes a lot of choice, a lot of sense. You can just push things into the database and grab it whenever you want. It's very easy to get to, to store things. The thing that is not so good is data inconsistency, which is a bit of a problem. And the other part that is not so good is the, the lack of relations. Now, this may not be a big problem for you. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's like a deal breaker or anything like that, but it, you do feel it sometimes. For the most part, it's absolutely wonderful. I mean, we use MongoDB at my company and for the most, like often it's not a problem. Like 
it's very rare but i like to be objective so i'm gonna give you the good and i'm gonna give you the bad so let's talk about the bad so when i'm saying that dating consistency is the problem it's basically it basically means that because everything is in, in the database is stored as documents and that basically means that it's all json you cannot really always know that something's going to be where you put it the, the, what I mean is that, you know, in a relational database is that you declare a very a fairly strict model. You have a table of, a, a, in, a, you know, in a sense. And these r tables have rows and columns, or rather columns more is the more, more important part here, which are labeled very nicely. They're, they have a type. They are very, very f thoroughly declared. So you know what's there. And you know if something's going to be there or something could, could like, be like it can things can't be inconsistent virtually or very rarely they get inconsistent that's not true for mongodb and document databases in general that means that you have to like it on small scale this uh, this is not a problem but it can become a problem when you do database migrations and so forth because the database doesn't help it's looser if you will and that's a good thing and a bad thing it, I'll, I'll leave it to you to decide if you think it's a problem or not i can only speak for myself where Oftentimes, I've been working and one of my colleagues have pushed some code to the project and my serializer has basically gone, you know, broken because they changed the data model and my model doesn't fit into what's in the database and now I have to drop my database and like I do a migration and so forth. And this, you know, you have to do that in a relational database as well, but it's very nice to have data consistency sometimes it is that's one thing that's not so great another thing that is not so great is the lack of proper relationships which basically means that in a relational database traditionally what you would do is that if say you have two pieces of data that are associated let's say that you store i don't know let's say that you store a bunch a, a user and they have a bunch of followers now, in a relational database, you would simply have an ID or a foreign key that would declare that this user has a list of followers, basically. And then you would simply join, if you will, that list of followers. When you're reading things up from the database, you would simply declare, I want to join these two pieces of data together and get all of it back as one big payload. That's amazing. That means you can go to the database once, a very fairly simple query, and the relational database is going to do what it does best. Well, in theory, what it does best. That's another topic, but joining is what it's supposed to be doing best. So, that's easy peasy. That's not what happens in MongoDB, because in MongoDB, you don't have the concept of joining things in the same manner. It's a JSON structure, therefore, you optimize for something different. And, you know, joining is not one of them. So, what we usually do when we have to solve this type of problem is that we simply store, like in this scenario, we would simply store a list of all the IDs of the followers in, like, on the person, person data, and we would get the person and either do a very fancy query that gets the person and then goes through the array of IDs and simply gather, gathers those things up and like formats it in the database. But usually it's much easier to simply get the person read all that into memory and get the list and then create a separate query for all the IDs in the list of people who are following that user and get that as a separate query. So there you have it. Two queries for something that a relational database very easily does in, in one. This is so, once again, not a major deal breaker, it, but the, there are these tiny things that are a little bit different. So I'm not here to say that you should go with a like a document database over a relational database like mongodb is absolutely amazing and as i said i use have used it a lot but i sh you should know that these things become they're not a problem at at lower like at a small scale 
and I'm not saying that relational databases don't have problems. I'm just saying that when you get up to larger scales, and especially if your data model gets a little bit more complicated, it's very nice to have a relational database that handles a lot of structuring and enforces types and enforces you know, data consistency. And at smaller scale, when, it, you know, when you're more about speed and getting things done, I personally think that MongoDB is the nicest way because the thing is that I think that the best argument is that in a relational database, making mistakes in your model design is it's it's a big hassle if you if you you know it, it's very tricky to change the data structures and like change, update tables and all that stuff that's what's very nice about mongodb like when you have like the, the inconsistencies and the looseness of mongodb allows you to actually change your mind about data structures very easily and you can kind of migrate back and forth that that's what i really like about it so i would say that I, if i'm saying going to say something definitive def, uh, definitive about this i would say that what i love about mongodb is that at small scale and up to medium like where, as your company is maturing it's very you know you often find yourself that you make assumptions and things are changing all the time and you make mistakes about your model that's when it's very nice to have a relation like a document database because you can change things very easily and when you have a very established company and your models are very like they've been around for a long time you really like they, they they're not changing all that much they're really settled in that's when a relational database is really really nice so to me the choice between mongodb and some relational database is actually more about the maturity of your models and how long you know they've been around that's at least my point